All right, guys, so it's Wednesday, June 8th, and I'm over here at the 07 Pre Storage. I'm working on this thing, so I got my new uh, EGR block off plate off eBay. So I've already tested this one here, so it looks like it's gonna block that perfect. So I'm just gonna have to put some RTV on there just to make sure it seals all the way since it doesn't have the little piece that actually goes inside the hole so i'll get that rtv to get that one on and i've already got the actual egr unbolted from the head and so now i just got to get that one bolt back out which is just in there a couple threads but so that's what i've got to get i've got to get that bolt out so that way uh I can get this other block off on there. And then it should be good to go. I'll just have to put a nut on the back side and go that route, but it'll get done. So I'm going to get the RTV and I'm just going to put some RTV around that. I'll probably wipe it down first. But I'm just going to put a little bit of RTV around the hole and then put the plate on and probably just impact it down. Fuck it. That way it'll be nice and tight and you won't have to worry about it. And then it's just going to be getting that EGR tube there off of that rear manifold. And if, if I can get it off, then uh, I don't have to pull the transmission back off. So that'll be a plus. So I'm going to try to get to it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not, but I'm going to try to, to get to it and get that loosened back up so I can get that off of there. And then I'll just be running a nut and bolt through the hole and bolting that up and i'll probably rtv that one too just to be sure so but i'm gonna go ahead and get this front one on and i'll give you guys another update once i make some progress on this all right so i've got the front or the upper one i got this one here on the lower intake manifold is on i just put a i used a high temp gray rtv gasket maker and I just put a nice little ring around the hole and then stuck the plate on there. I had to kind of hold it up and then whenever I tightened it, it twisted a little bit, but it's all right. It's still covering the hole. So that's all that matters is it covers the hole. We're just trying to keep from having a vacuum leak. That's it. So now I've just got to work on getting this rear wind. And now that I've got this unbolted, I can kind of angle the nut a little bit so maybe I'll be able to get a better a better grip on it to pull that back off so I'll definitely keep you guys updated just as soon as I figure something out on this rear manifold right, so got another update for you so I'm working on the EGR getting this side off the rear manifold and I just no matter what I do I just can't get to that thing so instead of having to undo the whole engine and trans and take everything off the subframe and separate it, I'm just going to unbolt the rear manifold off the engine. And that way I just have to pull the plug wires, that rear hook, the O2 sensor. I can just unbolt all, undo all these bolts. The rear manifold will come off. I already I had to break the tube. Look, it had a hole in it anyways. So I broke the tube. So that wouldn't have been good. I, I don't think I see it unless that just happened. But uh kind of looks like it was leaking there before. A little bit of soot. So I know. But good thing I'm deleting that. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, plug wires undid. And this rear O2. It's just not even tight. And then I'll be able to unbolt this rear manifold and get it off there and I've already got it undone from the crossover so once I get this rear manifold off I can slide it off and uh, be able to get that bolt undone from the bottom side and I'll just go ahead and get the other plate put on and RTV before I bolt it back on so y'all stay tuned I'll give you guys another update once I get this rear manifold off Alright guys, so I've got the rear power log off. Here, I've already got the old piece of EGR 
plate out the bolt that was in there kind of kind of stripped itself a little bit right there you can see the thread so I guess that's where it was catching at I wasn't wanting to thread it in anymore but oh well don't need that so now I've got the rear power log off so let me use my impact there we go so now I got my little stand so now I can use this RTV so I'm going to test fit this first but yeah it looks like it's going to be about perfect so I guess uh, we'll see how it goes. So y'all stay tuned and I'll keep you guys updated. Alright, so I've got the rear power log back on. I've got the new lock off plate on there. So what I ended up doing was the little ring that goes through here. It's pretty much like this right here. So... I just reused this piece and all the shit that was broken sticking out I bent it in and then hammered it down flat and then I filled the inside of it with RTV and then stuck it in the hole and then I filled the outside like between the, the this piece that I took off of the old one that I shoved in there so it's filled with RTV in the hole and it's stuck in there and then I put RTV all over the back of the plate and all over the back side of this and then sandwiched it together so it kind of smushed out and made a little bit of a mess but it should be sealed and now I've got everything all tightened back down so now all I got to do is throw the O2 sensor back in and now everything's deleted the whole EGR system is deleted and then I gotta just tighten up my uh trans dipstick and then one thing i am probably going to do though is i am probably going to get a throttle body heat shield and bolts onto the two bottom studs of the throttle body and just gives you a little plate right here so i'll probably end up getting one of those eventually as well but for now this thing is pretty much essentially done and ready to go back in the car since i have the egr shit sorted out so now the only other thing I really have left is I've got to pull this back off of the steering shaft and then this has to go actually through the rubber boot that's up there on the firewall. Right. Yeah, that big ass gray one there. Yeah, so the one that's in there I've got to pull it out which this side bolts to the bottom side of the steering column so I've got to get up under the dash and unbolt the old one. So that way whenever I can either just unbolt this one and bolt it back on the steering column and let this hang out or something. But one way or another I need to, to get the one out of the car so that this brand new one can go back in. And then that way I, I won't have any play at all in my steering which that's what I, I need. So I don't want any play at all. But yeah, uh, other than just having to pull that steering linkage out of that boot right there and getting that one back on there like this thing is ready to go in so technically I could probably just unbolt this and just pull this back off and shove this thing back in the engine bay and so now the only thing I've got to figure out is well I'm gonna to have to take the front mount heat exchanger back off because I don't want to damage that and it does hang down farther than the radiator support which means I just have to lift the car even higher to clear so that's going to come back off. But I'm really happy with the progress. This thing is almost done. So hopefully in the next couple weeks this thing will be in. And we can get a first start on this thing. I do still have to send the computer back out to Daniel Smuts to get it retuned for the 80 pound injectors. And the E85 and the new pump and the smaller pulley and the intercooler and... Say so before I had the eBay stainless headers, now I have all ZZP uh, exhaust, front power log, rear power log, ZZP catalyst, downpipe, and the ceramic coated crossover from ZZP. So now everything's ZZ performance and not eBay. So 
I'm, I'm really happy with how everything's going. So now I just got to get this O2 back in and plug the, the spark plug wires back in and essentially done. So y'all stay tuned and I'll give you guys another update once I make some more progress. All right, you guys. So since I got the uh, EGR block offs on, got everything back together. And since that completed everything, it was pretty much... It's ready to go back in, so I was able to get the engine scooted close enough to this front bar to where it's hitting on the cherry picker on both sides. And I wasn't going to be able to use just the hook to hook it up there, so I had to use the chain. I wrapped around this bar, just put a nut and bolt through it, and I wrapped both links through the hook. And then got the chains wrapped back around, or the ends wrapped back around the chain. So, I may, I was able to get the car lifted up. I'm still got to lift it up a, about another six or eight inches or so. And But I'm able to scoot the engine and the cart forward some. So, I'm just kind of working on getting this high enough. Hopefully, the hood doesn't hit the roof. I don't think it will. But, as long as I can get this high enough to clear... The radiator support then I can slide this back under there <clears throat> so it's coming along I'll keep you guys updated all right you guys so made some progress there pretty much kind of got it lined up with where they're gonna go looks like everything's going to clear here I've got, I need to scoot it back a little bit further because as I let this down, it's going to go back. But the sub, or the cherry picker might, I could also get it to move forward if I block off the wheels. But I'm going to have to pull those nuts and bolts off of the uh, uh, down pipe there. So that way they're not poking out, getting in the way. And I'm just going to have to go down slow and... Just be careful, but it's it's coming along. It's getting there. So, and then uh, I'll probably just end up whenever I uh, get the tarp off and I get inside, then I'll unbolt that uh, linkage from the bottom of the steering column, and I can also swap it out from the inside if I don't uh, hook it up. And then once I get it undone from the column, then I can just pull it out the hole. And then slide the new one in there and pop it back on and it'll be available to hook up down here. Which I will once once I do that I'll have to drop the subframe like two or three inches to be able to get that to go on the stem there. <clears throat> but this is a major progress. I'm, I'm really happy with getting this back in here and start getting everything hooked up. So y'all stay tuned. I'll keep you guys updated once I get this closer to installed all right y'all well she's going in there lining up pretty good probably needs to go back just a little bit more there we go so looking pretty straight plenty of clearance over here yeah that looks pretty good I'm going to keep lowering this thing down and hopefully she stays lined up. So, making good progress today though. So, I'll keep you guys updated. Well, shit guys. So, the engine and trans are back in. All four subframe bolts are in and tight. Man, that cart worked so great. That was so awesome for free, man. I cannot tell you enough but yeah this way i still have plenty of room to get back in here with my impact and put the uh, front mount heat exchanger back on from the inside and then i could put the condenser back in and then the radiator i had to pull those out just so i could get to that one screw but it's all good my radiator hoses are going right where they need to be i mean should i cannot be happier Everything's in place. Everything's clearing. 
Looks like the only thing that's not clearing is my fuel pressure gauge. <clears throat> but that's okay. Maybe I can get another thread or two on that. I'm super stoked. Super excited. Wow, it's been so long since there's been an engine in this engine bay. Just hard to believe <clears throat> that there's one in here again. But yeah, this is awesome. Super stoked. So, and then that right there is going to plug in to that. And once this gets pulled forward from the dog bones, I'll have more, more space. And this will go back down and bolt onto the trans. I still need to swap the cable. But it's not that bad. So I might even be able just to get a new plastic piece that goes inside of this black piece. And so I have a whole other shifter cable. So if I can get that plastic piece out, this would actually clips on to the little ball. That's on that shifter down here. I don't know if you can see that little ball there. But yeah, it's got a little piece of plastic. And I guess on this one, the ball broke off or they broke the plastic. So they just welded this bolt in there and put nuts in a washer on. And I mean, it does work, but it has play in it. And so... I think that's partially what blew up the original transmission I had in here was because I put it in drive, but it really put it into third. And I didn't know that. So I was running like 90 miles an hour down the interstate in third because the shifter was a little loose and I didn't, I didn't think anything of it at the time. I just bought the car for 250 bucks. I was just happy that it was going. And the guy said it had some transmission problems, but... I mean, it drove fine. The CV axle boot was broke. So every time you would turn left, then the boot would come out of the, the deal. And then that would make it, make it not want to go. And so I ended up getting these two brand new axles and two brand new front wheel bearings from Detroit Axle for like 150, 160 bucks for both, for like all four. And it was like a package deal. And they've been great. The only problem I had was one of these two i think it was the one on the other side but one of them has just a tiny little nick in the boot and it was singing grease and so they refunded me like 15 dollars to go buy another boot and i was like well that's not really what i was asking on you know it says it has a 10-year warranty it's brand new it shouldn't have any nicks in it but that's all they would do was send me a 15 dollar refund and tell me to go buy a new boot so I just took it as it is what it is and I put some RTV over the nick and you really can't even tell. It doesn't sling grease no more or anything. But hell yeah, made shit ton of progress today. I'm super stoked. So yeah, now I'm going to uh, get that front mount heat exchanger screwed back in on this inside screw and then the one going up from the bottom and then... I've completely forgot to grab some from work, but once I get a couple more from work, I'll put another one in on the other side. But I can do that after the fact. And then I also want to get the trans cooler mounted in here so I can try to see where my lines need to go. So I've got my lines here. So, I mean, that's about perfect with how I was wanting to do it. So, shit, I'm, I'm super stoked. Everything's lining up great. Like, it's back in the car. That's super crazy. I still can't believe it. <clears throat> but, yeah, she's in there. So, y'all stay tuned. I'll keep you guys updated once I start getting, or once I get the front mount heat exchanger, the AC condenser, and the radiator all back in here. I'll give you guys another update. All right, you guys. So, I've got everything back in. I also got the trans cooler installed. So what I ended up doing was so up here in the corner, um, there was already a hole there. So I just put a zip tie through the top and then on the bottom, I just put a self tapper right there and just, uh, use my hand. Well, first I drilled the hole and then I pressed that up where it was going to line up and made an indent in the cooler 
and then backed it off and swiveled it out to, out here to where I could actually get to it and just drilled a hole and then lined it back up and put the screw through and snugged it down and it's uh it's pretty solid and then it still has you know I can still fit my fingers back behind there between the trans cooler and the AC condenser I've got my lines hooked up and tight and then down here on the bottom uh, I zip tied them up to the bottom of the radiator support right there and then they just kind of tuck between the uh, front mount heat exchanger and the radiator support worked out really well like this is coming along great way better than I expected it to I thought it was gonna be a lot more difficult then I've already got the radiator hoses on I've already got the dog bones on I still need to touch these up but for now they're already on I just wanted to hold this in place it definitely looks like the fuel pressure gauge is going to be just a little bit too tall to shut the hood which kind of sucks so I'll probably have to get some cradle spacers in order but it's still not a big deal like I said the hood has to come off anyway so it can get sanded and painted so I can at least still get the car running and everything and get it all together and so yeah so now it's pretty much just plugging everything in getting the computer plugged in there's the AC line right there and then that's to hold the harness here there's the ABS I if we go down like that no we don't have the way Put it on like that. Shifter cable out of the way. There we go. That goes on there like that. That clip's gonna hold that. And this comes and plugs in up here. Oh, this is so sweet. I think I gotta pull this back out. Yeah, there we go. Now that can click on there. And then once you push that down, you start pushing that in. There it goes. Locks. That goes to the mass airflow. Heck yeah. I'm making a ton of progress today, you guys. I'm super happy. With all the progress. Okay, I still need to figure that thing out. But yeah, I'm making a shit ton of progress. Engine and everything is in. Now it's just hooking everything up. Uh, I still have to get its one inch inner diameter uh, line for the front mount heat exchanger. And then I've got to mount the pump somewhere over here and have the fill neck. So, I don't know, but it's definitely, it's coming along. I'm super stoked. I've still got to run this uh, set of wires back down to the radiator fans. And then this just has to get plugged into the fuse box. That gets ran to the coolant tank, which is still in the trunk, I believe. But, man, it is in. I'm super excited. And then I've still got to get all of the suspension and all this stuff hooked back up. Get the knuckles back in the struts. But it's all good. It's coming along and I cannot be fucking happier. So y'all stay tuned and I'll keep you guys updated. Alright guys, so I made a little more progress. So I've got the harness in the fuse box. I have all four of the, the harnesses that go to the fuse box are all tightened down. Fuse box is sitting on there. All these plugs are plugged in. The ground is on. I've got this knuckle on. It's the two bolts aren't tight but I have the knuckle on and in place and I got this side on and in place need to adjust the tie rods a little bit but nothing to worry about right this second <clears throat> and then I still got to get the exhaust on which isn't that big of a deal but man like everything's in here like everything is coming together like so quick I did not expect it to go this quick today 
I thought I was just going to get maybe the, the EGR block off plates on, but it actually stopped raining and it's turning out to be a decent day. So, yeah, I made so much progress on this thing today. Can't believe I was able to get the car high enough without the hood hitting the ceiling. <clears throat> but it's all in here. Didn't damage anything. I did have to rotate the uh, fuel pressure regulator just a little bit so that it didn't kink my fuel fuel line. So what I'll probably end up having to do is order in a 90 and then put in this fitting in a 90 so that way I can keep this facing straight forward. And then that way this line can just go in straight that away and it won't be any de any big deal at all. But still not a big deal at all right now. It's hooked up. And that's all I really care about at the moment. So I'm super excited. I still have to grab that other shipper cable out of the back floorboard and see if it's got that. See if I can get that plastic piece out of there. And if I can, then the bracket will just bolt back on and I can just clip that onto that one and it's good to go. Don't have to mess with any of the center console or any of that. <coughs> so... But it's coming along. I'm super excited. So y'all stay tuned and keep you guys updated as I keep making some more progress. Alright you guys. So I was trying to put on the strut bar. But the uh, fuel line right here is in the way. So I just didn't put it on. And then I got out the other shifter cable. But the end here. See how this one is just flat and around. Well, this one is what I've got. And on the other style, on this style, it just has a plastic piece in the middle that will clip onto that little ball. So maybe I can get one off of a Grand Am shifter cable or something. I'm not for sure. <clears throat> but if not, if I can't get something to go in the middle of that that'll click onto that ball, then I'm going to have to change the whole shifter cable. But it's a good thing I have one, so. But uh, right now I just filled up, I just added that whole gallon of Valvoline transmission fluid. And it's full of oil. It's got a whole gallon of trans fluid in there, so it should have some fluid. Uh, it did leak a little bit, but it was just from the dipstick seal. So I've got the new, brand new battery in. It's like four months old. But it's still brand spanking new this year. And I've got everything hooked up. Radiator uh, hoses are hooked up. All that's hooked up. Everything is going great so far. I'm super excited. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to prime the fuel system. And just turn the key off and on a couple times and... Make sure we don't have any leaks and make sure that we have good fuel pressure. And I, I think it's like 60 or 65 PSI fuel pressure is what you're supposed to have. I'll have to look it up just to double check. But everything's coming along great. I'm super stoked, super excited. So I guess I'm about to prime the fuel system real quick. Ooh, I got lights. Where's the key? There's the key. On the fuel system. I don't see any pressure on the gauge. That's primer again. I 
definitely hear it kicking. It's not leaking anywhere. But I'm still not seeing any pressure on the gauge. Got a half a tank of fuel. Well, at least she cranked over. <clears throat> it's all right though, she's coming together, so. All right, I guess I'm gonna keep working on this thing and see what's up with the fuel, why it's not uh, giving me any fuel pressure there. And uh, I'll give you guys another update. Alright you guys, so I made a lot of progress today. <clears throat> I've got pretty much everything in here hooked up. Everything's plugged in. I still need to get that plastic piece for the shifter cable, but I just went ahead and bolted it down. It's just a couple bolts, so it's out of the way. Um, I did, I turned the key off and on like 15 times. I can hear the pump kicking on, but for whatever reason, I'm not getting any pressure up here at the gauge. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but uh, it's all right. Not that big a deal. So to, for today, I've, I've made a shit ton of progress today. I'm tired and I'm hungry. I haven't ate anything today, so... I'm just going to pick up all the tools and probably just pull all the tools out of the trunk and just stack everything in here on the cart and go home, take a shower, get something to eat, and I'll come back tomorrow after I get off of work and work on this a little bit more and we'll go from there. So y'all have a good night and I'll catch you guys back over here tomorrow.